So hello everyone uh, from the sunny Germany. My name is David from Goethe University Frankfurt and I'm very happy to uh, present virtually my um, paper co-authored with Sebastian Papp and Kai Randberg um, with the title explaining the technology use behavior of privacy enhancing technologies, the case of Tor and John Lenum. Um, we have the following agenda for the talk today. Uh, I will start uh, with a quick introduction to the topic, um, provide you um, theoretical background on how Tor and John Lenum work and what the um, economical differences are. Um, then we continue with our used methodology, which is um, a mixed method approach. Um, in the next step, I present you the results and then we conclude with a discussion and um, conclusion. So what is the initial situation currently? So um, we have a very nice quote here um, from Perry Barlow, an American essayist and poet. He says that the internet is the most liberating tool for humanity ever invented and also the best for surveillance. It's not one or the other, it's both. And I think that's pretty much um, uh, on the point here. So we have a situation where individuals need protection when they are um, moving on the internet. And um, there are basically two things um, that can protect people. We have on the one hand, uh, privacy protection by law. For example, in Europe, we have the General Data Protection Regulation, the GDPR, which uh, protects certain um, um, behaviors of, of companies uh, regarding processing and collecting of data. And we have these, uh, this large um, um, stream basically of, of, of technologies that help um, people to protect themselves. And um, among these um, tools are pets, so privacy enhancing technologies. And basically our goal is um, to enable users um, to use these tools with less effort um, as before. So if we are looking at pets, we have um, basically oftentimes primary goals and secondary goals if you look at the user. So for example, there are pets like um, anonymous credentials, privacy ABCs, where the primary goal is to provide credentials to a certain, to provide um, the credential of the individual to a certain uh, service. And the secondary goal while doing this is protecting the privacy or uh, enabling the anonymity. However, our research objects, Tor and John Anum, um, are some kind of other class. So we called it uh, standalone pets because they have basically multiple use scenarios that you can imagine. So there, the differentiation between primary and secondary goal is not that um, yeah, solid. So we basically said, okay, the primary goal of these technologies is protecting the privacy of the individual. This is important at the later stage, uh, which you will see when developing the constructs and formulating the exact questions that you ask people. So we focus on a letter on Torn and Anonym. Um, and if you now look at uh, Tor and John Anum, doesn't matter, also at other pets, you always have uh, two very big problems, in my opinion. So the first one is related to privacy in general. So privacy is a very abstract term and people oftentimes don't really care about privacy or have problems with it because the short term benefits of doing something that is um, not beneficial for the privacy are oftentimes way bigger than the short term risks or consequences. It's like smoking here at some point. Um, so the immediate result of, of using a pet is oftentimes not visible, especially since uh, computer scientists and developers of, of, of such pets try to um, design the pets in a way that uh, the use of the pets is not visible. That's the best pet. If you don't um, perceive any uh, decrease of performance or stuff like that. This is in contrast to other systems like 
games where you have immediate feedback, where you get immediate rewards, um, or uh, Excel, for example, where you can see, okay, these numbers fit together and I can calculate something. The second part is that the technical functioning is quite complex. So layman users um, uh, have very hard problems uh, of understanding what happens there. Uh, thus, they cannot really evaluate um, to what extent the pet is fulfilling its promises. And therefore, we, we were wondering, okay, which aspects influence use intentions and behaviors? And in the first step, we asked, active users of people uh, of pets um, with the following goal so we did a quantitative analysis with known acceptance factors since we wanted to have a solid uh, theoretical starting point and we augmented these factors with factors where we thought okay these might be relevant for pets namely perceived anonymity and trust we will um, go into detail later and then we had our results from our quantitative analysis and analyzed answers to open questions from our online survey in a qualitative fashion in order to um, develop new variables in order to find out uh, new concepts relevant for future work maybe. So before we uh, go into the um, results and into the map ma into the method um, just quickly because it's important later on for understanding also the results uh, better how does tor function how does john anonym function so tor um, i think you know how it works uh, everyone can operate such a relay such a node um, it's donation based um, and it's based on this onion routing concept um, it's free to use and um, it's, I would argue, the largest pet at the moment with 2 million active users. And so we have this um, technical side, which is based on this mixed networks, onion routing, and the uh, business side, which is that it's uh, donation based and free to use. If we look at John Donum, so John Doss, the company developing this tool, um, or operating this tool at the moment was in our project and um, they are um, basically now a commercial service they were also developed in a university but transitioned to a commercial service um, with different pricing schemes there is a free to use option but with very limited um, bandwidth and this is the business side the technical side it's is that it's unlike tor based on mixed cascades so users can choose which mixed cascades they want their data to transfer over and then they have for example free service and over which their data is transferred so this is the broad overview um, and to our method so all our constructs and our questionnaire were adapted from prior literature in order to have uh, valid and reliable measures of what we want to know. And we um, distributed the survey to English speaking and also German speaking um, people because um, we wanted to have as many people as possible, especially for Tor. This was very, very difficult because Apparently, the Tor crowd is very hard to uh, get access to. We had a diverse set of channels where we posted the um, link to the survey. We also didn't compensate them for participating. We just said, hey, um, the survey will be used to um, um, yeah, improve the service. So we also, of course, gave the results to, to John Doss to improve um, the John Donum service, and also I sent the results to um, the Tor project. And yeah, so we had um, our constructs were also translated uh, with certified translators so that this gap between German and English um, survey, the potential gap is not so, so bad. Um, so 
our sample size is, is 141 for John Newman, 124 for Tor. So in sum, we had 265 active users of pets in our sample. And our model looks basically like this. We have at the bottom, you see the classical technology acceptance model factors from past literature, which is perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use and behavioral intention and use behavior. And at the top part, you see perceived anonymity and trust in the pet, which are these newly uh, added variables. And um, I will only focus now on these two and the corresponding hypothesis because I think it's the most interesting one. So perceived anonymity um, has two relations. We hypothesized that uh, on the one hand, perceived anonymity has a positive effect on trust. Um, so we inserted this, this construct because as I said earlier, anonymity is not really tangible. So people might have difficulties in judging the technology. Does the perception matters? Do I perceive that a pet fulfills its purpose providing anonymity? And if I think so, then I trust it more. Yeah. And the same holds for the usefulness. So as I said earlier, we had this differentiation between primary and secondary goals. And it comes uh, basically, and you see the result here. So we formulated <clears throat> perceived usefulness as perceived usefulness of pets to protect individuals' privacies, uh, users' privacy. So um, here we argue, okay, if people think that anonymity is given, then that will have an effect on the perceived usefulness. Sure, because anonymity is the primary purpose and uh, it should have a positive effect on the usefulness. Um, trust um, has three relations. So um, trust in the service um, has a positive effect on intention, of course, uh, this is a known relation from the literature also. And second one uh, is related to uh, perceived usefulness again. Um, there we can see that if users trust a technical system, um, then they also perceive it as useful. This is um, known from literature and we said, okay, this is also um, holding for our case of pets. The third one is uh, trust in the pet has a positive effect on the perceived ease of use. Um, this is based on also prior literature, which finds that um, the more people trust something, um, the less they need to understand every detail of how the technology functions, which is especially relevant for pets, of course, with the high technical complexity. So um, for our results, we did all kind of um, tests. Our results were valid and reliable. We needed to do so many statistical tests. Um, because otherwise our results would not be um, interpretable like this. And it's also very urgently needed due to a rather small sample size. And uh, we found that everything was okay. So we can conclude with the results. Here's the model again. Um, and I um, underlined a few relevant results. We can see that basically um, all of our hypotheses could be confirmed. Um, we can also see that perceived anonymity and trust in the pet um, have indeed the um, effects on the other variables as uh, hypothesized. Um, trust in the pet has the largest effect size in relative to the other two. Um, constructs on behavioral intention. So you can see the three arrows leading to behavioral intention from trust, perceived usefulness, and perceived ease of use. And of those three, trust in the pet is the most important one. What is also very interesting with this rather parsimonious model, we could achieve an R squared value. So the explained variance uh, of behavioral intention is roughly 
half. So we could explain half of the variance in behavioral intention. And yeah, this is a pretty good result. Um, then we come to the qualitative part where we had these five questions. Um, due to time constraints, I don't want to go into detail. However, these are very yeah, general questions and we saw a, a very interesting answers to it. So we um, went into a lot of effort um, and coded them with two independent coders. And basically what we did is in the first step, we coded very close to the data. And then we um, summarized these codes to so-called subconcepts. And then in the third step, we summarized these subconcepts um, to concepts. And this is what you have here. You can basically start reading the table from left to the right. So um, on the left side concepts, you have this broad um, overview uh, concepts, statements about technical issues, beliefs and perceptions and economical issues. And then the subconcepts and then the uh, uh, codes that are very close to the, to the text, to the answers of the participants. Um, one time summarized, common to both pets, and one time we divided them. So specific subconcepts for Tor and for the anonym. So for example, you could see that the pet design, uh, first line, there are differences uh, for Tor and Jondonym in a way that for Tor people um, have concerns about malicious exit nodes and for Jondonym they are concerned about the location of mixed cascades. So for example, if all, if all parts of the mixed cascades are in one country, um, some agencies could request from a judge access to them and then you could be de-anonymized. Very interesting is compatibility. So something that should be considered also for future work, in my opinion, accessibility of websites was oftentimes mentioned. Um, and yeah, also anonymity um, as a part of beliefs and perceptions. Um, here we have the concern of John the Noom users uh, re related to size of the user base. So exactly this anonymity set uh, is a problem, especially for smaller pets like John the Noom. Um, and then we have social consequences, very interesting. So for example, beliefs about social effects that people mentioned when using Tor. So something, uh, people think they're doing something very shady there. And yeah, based on this, um, I think one, one can do a lot of nice stuff. Uh, due to time constraints, I will now continue with our discussion and conclusion. So limitations quickly. Um, First thing is the sample size. As I said, it's not that large, but still uh, we did all the tests and it still was okay. And uh, we have self-reported biases common to all user studies, basically. Um, the translation could have been in point of error. However, we did all to avoid it. And the sample is biased by default since it includes only active users. So no non-users. And we didn't control for former control. Uh, for former the use of standalone pets for comparable ones. So future work um, basically um, follows this limitations part and the qualitative analysis. So first thing uh, we can use now these qualitative concepts we found and operationalize them uh, for quantitative studies or also for for uh, further qualitative studies. Qualitative studies, especially when asking layman users which is now the second point here. So analyze perceptions of non-users is very important. However, um, if, we, if reviewers tell you, yeah, well, you only ask active users, ask non-users, it's pretty hard to find those people. So for pets, um, finding 500 people who didn't use pets, but know about them somehow, it's very difficult. However, this is the thing that we should target now. And we have now worked out several interesting facts we showed that the basic acceptance factors for pets hold two. We showed that our two variables that we added are very, very re relevant. They, incre uh, they explained the variance of behavioral intention increased by 11 percentage points, which is a lot. And our new concepts like social, like the social aspects, the concerns about the user base, 
could be really, really interesting for future work and should be included in every analysis there. So I think this is my part now. Um, I wish you a nice conference and all the best. Thank you.